All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the governor removal, uh, and then we're going to replace our stock ignition coil with the red aluminum coil. So we need to get the old throttle linkage off. so we're not losing. I'm going to remove the blower housing so I can get to the flywheel easily. Close my fuel switch. Ground wire. Floor house now the way. Now I got access to my flywheel. We'll need to get to that later. I'm going to remove the air box. It's just these two nuts. Now we just as well go ahead and remove this plate because we're no longer going to use that. So I'm going to get my pulse line off of here. I got two bolts holding this little throttle plate on. Remove both of these. Now we take this off, we're gonna have the spring up under the bottom. You see all the extra holes I've drilled in this governor arm in the past, trying to get this engine not to close the throttle shaft so soon. But I never succeeded. And look at your throttle rod, and look at your regulator spring. Save that throttle rod for later because you will need it. Now we're gonna get this fuel pump and top plate, fuel pump mounting bracket out of our way. Hang on to our fuel pump because we'll need that as well. Now we can go ahead and remove this arm, which in the governor days would be voodoo because we would never remove this arm in the governor days or we'd never get it back right. We can take this thing off. We might need a flat screwdriver. Pry it loose. Now we've got that shaft ready to fall out, but obviously it won't fall out because our crank's in the way. So we're gonna go inside and show you how to remove that. But the first thing I'm gonna do, you have two options on removing the pin for the governor wheel. You can do it from the inside with a, a specialized punch or something, or the easiest way is just remove the flywheel and knock it out from the outside. So I'm gonna pull the flywheel. Use one of these flywheel pullers. If you don't have one of these, this is a lifesaver for pulling the flywheel. It's a whole lot easier than putting the nut on and trying to knock it off.
Move my flywheel. Now I can easily access this pin right here is the one we're going after. So I'm going to take a hammer, a small punch. I'm going to knock that pin out. I'm just going to knock it in the engine. Very easy. And then I'm going to take a quarter 20 tap. Now you can tap this hole. Some people just thread the screw right in, but I choose to tap it because it's a little easier. But that'll be a quarter 20 tap. Then I'm going to take an Allen screw, quarter 20 Allen screw. You need something fairly short. This is quarter inch. Thread it right in that hole. Lock tight, stuff such as that is not necessary. Although if you choose to use it, it won't hurt a thing. Now I've got that side plugged. I'm gonna switch around here and pull my crankcase cover off. These six 10 millimeter bolts. I have already drained the oil. If you don't do that, you're getting ready to make a mess. Try not to let your can fall out. So there's the pin that we've already knocked out and the governor gear is still in there. We're gonna get that out as well. This is the tricky part, getting this arm out. First thing I'm gonna do is reach in here with a pair of needle nose and pull this governor gear out, get it out of the way. Now it's very important. There's a washer on this boomerang governor arm and there's a washer inside. You can see that with the camera. It's very important we don't leave that washer inside the engine. So I'm gonna take a magnet, reach in here and get that washer. It's very thin, very easy to miss. Don't miss that when you're taking your governor out. Now, you could take the piston and rod and crank and everything out of this engine to remove it, um, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to knock it out done this a couple times. I'll see if I can hit it right. You have to position your crank to the right place. And just knock it out. I uh, will have a little force to it. You will have to, you know, put a little heat to it. But if you position that crank in the right place, it will push out without having to remove the crank and the rod. Now, remember I said, there'll be another washer up here. Make sure we get it. Oh, my bad, it's already out uh -huh. with the rod. But anyway, two washers. Make sure we don't miss those two washers. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, is tap this top hole where your governor arm came out. Again, you can tap it or you can simply screw a bolt in it if you want to. If you don't have access to a tap, it will work. <clears throat> Another quarter 20, quarter inch long, just like I did in the other hole. Again, if you choose to lock, use lock tight, it's totally up to you, it's not necessary. So now, we've got both our holes plugged. We have our governor completely removed. Now, you're always gonna get a little metal in there from where you just done that work, so you wanna be sure to clean that really good before we put it back together. I'm gonna replace my side cover gasket because I don't like to reuse them. All right, so we got the inside of our engine cleaned out. I took a little carburetor cleaner, sprayed in there in a rag, and just made sure I didn't have any metal shavings because we all know what that'll do to the internals of our engine. Got me a new side cover gasket. I cleaned both my gasket mating surfaces, make sure I got those issues there. I'll reinstall my side cover. 
In case you hadn't figured it out by now, we're in a live working shop today. <laughs> That's all the background noise, people talking. Start all six bolts. And I'm gonna recommend you torque them to 220 inch pounds. I've already preset our inch. Outside cover's reinstalled. Put the engine back around. Put our flywheel back on. Still got our stock key in place. Don't have to do anything there unless you want to clean the back of your flywheel. You know, that wouldn't hurt a thing. Line your key slot back up with your keyway. Starter cup's got a little indention in it that lines up with the hole in your flywheel. Line the cup up, nut on. Start it by hand. And you can torque these about 65 foot pounds for good diet. All right, now we got our flywheel reinstalled. I'm gonna go ahead and put the coil on. And bolt our own coil. New coil is going to come with its own uh, kill switch wire, so you can remove the whole wire, boot, and everything. We recommend a coil gap of 40 to 50 thousandths. Uh, what works really nice is two flaps of cardboard off of a piston box or a notebook or whatever, or you can use feeler gauges if you want to do it a little more accurately. I turn it around to the magnet, so the magnet will hold the coil down, snug both bolts up. Roll the paper back out from under, you can look and see that gap. reroute our kill switch wire from straight over the top goes down in these two channels Go back through here and back inside the little plastic holder that's it nothing fancy on the kill switch wire then on our coil wire we're going to also reroute it it's going to go up under the insulator and then in the insulator channel on the top and then fold the plug boot back on. Now that's it, our ignition is installed. We've got our governor removed. Now the next thing we've got to do is hook up our new throttle linkage because we're not going to use the throttle that pulls off the governor anymore. All right guys, so we flip the engine around. We've got our traditional top plate like we always run on the clones. Uh, one thing that I did learn, and I'm gonna go ahead and give you a heads up. A lot of times we take our adjustable, the old style adjustable fuel pumps, and we flip the top around to where the pulse line goes towards, the, actually it would mount like this, where the pulse line would go to the back of the engine on a clump. Well, that's not gonna work obviously with this box muffler. So if you leave the adjustable pump in the stock position where the lines are like this pump, everything will route a whole lot easier. Don't worry if you've got the adjustable pump, all you gotta do is, if yours is turned around this way, just take the four screws out, turn it back to the stop location where it looks like this. This will be our inlet, this will be our outlet, bolts on top pointing towards the front. Show you in a minute why that's important. So we're gonna snug up the top plate here. And like I say, it's the same top plate that went on clone. Many of you might have them laying around your shop somewhere. bolted so my stock fuel line that I used before will still work I'm just going to shorten it up a little bit you run it just like you would on a clone I'm going to go ahead and hook the throttle linkage up and do this the same as a clone 
put the linkage for the arm and then you know it's turned the wrong way just like they always are so we have to bend that what i found works best is a pair of needle nose just lay it over line which you can do multiple ways whatever way you or your builder chooses is fine you can go under the top plate and route it around like this which would work perfectly fine you can go over I'm sorry I had it the wrong end look be like that or you can go over and come in here which obviously you could shorten it up some um, whichever way you choose but I'm gonna go under the pump and bring it back in like so. And you just want to make sure whatever you do that you keep the hose off the muffler. So I'm probably going to put a tie strap around here just to make sure that I stay off the muffler because obviously we don't want to burn that pulse line as we do. Fuel pump doesn't pulse anymore. Put my line back to the front. <clears throat> I've got my throttle linkage hooked up so I put my clone would work. I'm going to put my blower housing back on. You're probably wondering why I got this oddball button head. That's because this hole is stripped out. I told you this was one of my personal used engines. So I just put a quarter twenty of it rather than having to put a helical oil. I'm going to hook my kill switch. Make sure I'm hooking the kill switch wire. The one that we ran from the new coil. Not an oil switch. Hook that back to my kill switch. I'm going to put my air box back on. Just back on the same way we took it off. Just got two nuts. Put your hose back in your valve cover. Now, the engine is complete as far as routing all our lines, removing our governor, hooking up our new throttle system. Don't forget to tie strap or wire all of your hose connections. I will do that off camera. Anyway, now we're going to take this thing back to the dyno. I'm going to show you why it is that this coil makes a difference. So in closing, um, I hope that the video provides a little bit of a visual for you on how the throttle shaft Kind of fluctuates back and forth back and forth with the governor um, and i know you're thinking well of course that's what the governor does but the issue is they don't do it consistently some do it at a very low rpm you know low to mid 4000 range and some won't pull the shaft back until they get up into the high fours closer to 5000 rpm so with the rev limiter coil you eliminate that all the motors will turn to 5000 plus and throttle shaft doesn't come back um, and, and it is our hope that it will take the engines that are weaker or, or not up to par and put them on par so that we have a more even playing field. If you have any questions, feel free to call into our tech department. We're always here to help.